Hey everybody, it's Clancy with HKM, and today I'm going to do a problem for ECE 3101, Signals and Systems. So, <clears throat> we're given this function, sync of 100 pi t, plus 3 times sync squared of 60 pi t, and we're asked to find what should our sampling rate be, and what should our sampling interval be. And in order to find out those things, we need to figure out the frequency characteristics of this function, or signal. And in order to do that, we need to take the Fourier transform. Whenever you hear frequency characteristics of a time domain function, you should think Fourier transform. And there's a really helpful page, uh, 252 of your book, that lists out some nice properties of the Fourier transform, or pairs, I guess. So one of them is that if you have w over pi times sync of wt, its Fourier transform is the rectangle function of omega over 2 times w. So in our case, we don't have that we don't have this w over pi, it's just 1. So you can think of that as multiplying by pi over w. And our wt is 100 pi times t, so we know that w is 100 pi. So this, the Fourier transform, Remember, we have to multiply by pi over w to compensate for what the equation says. So we have pi over w, which is 100 pi. And then we're multiplying that by the rectangle function of omega over 2w, which is 200 pi. So that's that for you, transform. <coughs> and now we have 3 sync squared of 60 pi times t. And if we look over here, we have uh, the next equation for sync squared. So we have w over 2 pi times sync squared of wt over 2. That Fourier transform is the triangle function of, w, of omega over 2w. So again, we have this weird constant out front. Ours is a 3. So we know that we need to, um, well we can pull the 3 out basically. I'll show you how to do it. So if you pull the 3 out, then you basically have a 1 out front. Which means we're multiplying by 2 pi over w. So this, the Fourier transform, comes out to be Fourier transform. So you have, let's see, 2 pi over w. And w in this case, remember we have this right here is wt over 2. So really w is 120 times pi. So we're going to have 2 pi over 120 pi. And that's going to be multiplied by the triangle function of omega over 2 times w which is 240 pi. Cool. So this right here is the Fourier transform of this function right here. So now what we need to do is, I, I think it would be helpful to plot it so you can see what it looks like on a graph. So I'm going to block the whiteboard for a second. but OK, so we have, for the sake of this problem, I'm going to take away these constants because they don't affect the bandwidth of the signal. So I'm just going to erase these. So now all we have to plot is rect of omega over 200 pi. And we know that is a rectangular function from negative 100 pi to 100 pi. So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, this amplitude is arbitrary for what we're trying to figure out. So now we have this rectangle function, and now we need to plot this triangle function, which we know is going to go from negative 120 pi to 120 pi. So we have negative 125 over to 125. And if you look, 
the triangle kind of encompasses this rectangle. And that's because the bandwidth of this triangle function is a little bit higher than the rectangle function. If you look here, the bandwidth is from here to here. So it's from the center out to this rightmost point. That's 100 pi radians. If you want to convert that to frequency, you divide by 2 pi. So we'll know that the bandwidth of this right here, this rectangle function, is 100 pi divided by 2 pi equals 50 hertz. Okay. okay, so now we want to find the bandwidth of this triangle function right here. So in the same exact way, pretty much, we take this value, which is 120 pi, and we divide by 2 pi, which is 60 hertz. And 60 hertz is greater than 50 hertz. So if we want to collect all the information from this signal, we'll have to sample at twice this frequency, which is 120 hertz. And then the sampling interval is just 1 over that value, which I'll let you guys compute. So, just to sum everything up, we were given a function in the time domain and we're asked to find the bandwidth, that, or the sampling frequency. So we knew we needed to take the Fourier transform to figure out the frequency characteristics of it. And we plotted them out. And then we saw that the triangle function had a bandwidth of 60 hertz. And that was higher than the rectangle function of 50 hertz. So we took 60 hertz and multiplied it by 2 to get the Nyquist sampling rate, which is 2 times 60 hertz, 120 hertz. Thanks. Hope this helps.